Let's keep on going. Oh, what do you know? There's a picture of the M5C. So this is our biggest hint as to what this machine is going to look like. Welcome to another episode of Nathan Builds Robots. So today I've got some breaking news for you. Anchor Make is coming out with a brand new 3D printer. So let's see what we know about it and discuss everything we know so far. So Anchor Make is a division of Anchor, which is a electronics company based in Shenzhen, China. They make a bunch of really neat stuff. I'm a big fan of Anchor. I've got a power bank here. I've got a power supply here. They're just really great devices for powering your electronics. In fact, the camera that I'm recording this on is being charged by an Anchor USB-C cable, just because I know they make high quality cables that work every time. Um, this power bank's really cool because it can charge 140 watts, which is enough to power and charge my laptop in like an hour. And then there's this tiny little power plug module thing. This thing can do 65 watts in this tiny little package, so it's super convenient. I can just fold it up, put it in my pocket, and then if I go to a coffee shop or something, I can charge my laptops, my power banks, my... Um, so I'm a big fan of the work that Anchor has done in the past, however, they're now stepping into the realm of 3D printing. So they've already come out with the Anchor Make M5, we can take a look at it on my computer screen here, and apparently these things are pretty nice, pretty fast and reliable. However, the big downside of it is that it costs $700, which puts it in competition with this here um, P1S which isn't a great place to be because the P1S is actually quite fantastic. So what I think Anchor Make is going to do here is they're going to make a cheaper version of the M5, the so-called M5C, which we've seen some announcements about. So I'm guessing the C stands for a cheap edition, so it'll be less expensive than the original M5, just undercutting the Bamboo Lab machines on cost. So here you can see they've demonstrated some prints with the M5C, and they've got a little link there so you can save 10% off the M5C. So if you're interested in getting a lower cost bed slinger with very high build quality that's typical of Anchor products, then maybe you can check that out. I'll leave a link in the description down below. If you go to the Anchor Make website, you can see they're doing some promotional uh, stuff about the M5C. There's a, uh, a truck here, little models that they've printed out. Then there's this little play pause button. This little play pause button is behind each item on the list. And would you look at that, it's coming in at a lower price of only $359. So if they're able to produce a 3D printer with very high build quality, high reliability, and just an overall good polished user experience, and they're able to sell it for $359, that's actually a really good price point that we haven't seen many other competitors hit. Um, I guess the closest thing would be the Ender 5 S1 Pro, which, let's be honest, that's not a super user-friendly machine. It's more of a tinkerer's machine with lots of uh, exposed wires and aluminum extrusion, which is great if you want to modify your printer, but if you want something that you just plop on your desk and it works, then the M5C is probably going to be a more attractive option to you. So according to all the publicly available information, it should be available on August 1st. I highly recommend you go and click that link and sign up for the Anchor Make M5C newsletter so you can get that 10% off discount if you're actually interested in buying one of these machines. One of the really interesting things about Anchor Make that they don't really publicly talk about very much is that they have their own AMS system. For those of you that have been living under a rock for the last year, the AMS system is Bamboo Lab's proprietary system for managing multiple spools of filament. It unlocks a bunch of really cool abilities like being able to switch between filaments mid-print and just being able to store a bunch of different spools for if you want to use different materials for different print jobs. It's just a really handy quality of life feature that only Bamboo Lab really has at this point. There's some open source alternatives to the AMS, like Prusa's MMU. I think the Voron and NX engineering teams are working on their own open source version of a multi-material unit. However, this is just something you can get and use right out of the box and it's really convenient. So I think if AnchorMate comes out with this V6 color engine and really brings that to market, that'll be the second really good commercially available option that you can just buy and use and hopefully it'll offer a great user experience. But you can see some images here, and they advertise being able to print up to six colors in a single print. And, you know, it's going to be useful for people who just want to load up a gigantic bin of material, and be able to run part after part after part, and not have to worry about those filament changeovers. Because I imagine if you're running a print farm, that would be one of the most annoying and manual parts of running prints. I mean, obviously you have to remove the parts when they're done as well, but there's a little bit of automation that you can do there. Like I've seen people tip it up to, at an angle and it like bumps into the gantry and knocks the parts off. 
However, changing the filament remains something that you would have to do manually. It'd be much better if you can just load up this gigantic container with six spools of filament and let that thing run for like a month straight. All right, so the AnchorMake V6 is gonna be awesome, and I assume that the M5C is also gonna be compatible with this unit. So in terms of a multi-material capable printing machine, uh, the M5C is probably gonna be your lowest cost option. The other one would be the P1P, but that overall system cost is gonna be um, 600 plus 350. So you're looking at about $1,000 to get a multi-material setup from Bamboo Lab. Anchor Makes V6 color engine should be on sale for about $400. So if you add $400, and on top of that, you get more than four colors. Here, you're limited to four, but with that V6 engine, you're gonna be able to get up to six colors, which is really awesome. But in terms of the M5C, let's see what else we can discover about this machine. And I've actually got some pictures here. Basically, a lot of governmental organizations require you to publish information about your devices before you release them. So let's look inside of this report and see what we can discover about the machine. Here's the antenna design, um, a bunch of other uninteresting things. You can see pictures of the antenna. Um, here's their test setup. And let's see, let's keep on going. Oh, what do you know? There's a picture of the M5C. So this is our biggest hint as to what this machine is going to look like. I mean, this is obviously a prototype. Um, you can see the aluminum has a raw appearance. Uh, let's look at a, a larger version of this here and zoom in. What can we see so far? So the main things are um, we've got a large aluminum base. So this thing appears to be constructed pretty similarly to this M5, their original 3D printer that they came out with. Um, it looks like these side pods are a little bit smaller. Looking at the original design, this has got like a large light and we've got a large touch screen on this side. If we look at this M5C, you can see there's no touch screen on the right side and there's no touch screen anywhere else in these pictures as far as I can see. Uh, this doesn't mean that it's going to ship without a touch screen. Uh, it's just a little bit strange that they're not including it here because it is part of the electronics package. However, if you look on the tool head, you can see it's missing the tool head here. So maybe they took a couple of parts off this thing. It's really hard to tell. But from what we can see so far, it looks like it's got a solid aluminum construction. This bottom black portion looks like it's injection molded plastic. Anchor Make tends to use more traditional manufacturing methods, unlike companies like Prusa, which 3D print all their parts. Anchor Make is all about that industrial design and making sure everything is cheap to manufacture. And they're using modern manufacturing techniques like injection molding and die casting. Now let's scroll down a little bit more and we can see here We've got a picture of the electronics bay. So we've got what appears to be a large 350 watt power supply. This is pretty typical of 3D printers. I'm assuming it's running off of a 350 watt um, 24 volt power supply. And we can see we've got three stepper motors here. Now something that's interesting to note that I'm noticing here is that these stepper motors on the side appear to be a little bit smaller than the stepper motor on the bottom. And if we get a ruler out, hold on, let me bust out a pair of calipers and I can measure these pixels on my screen. This stepper motor um, appears to be 18 millimeters on my screen. So I just measured a typical stepper motor on the back of my M5C over here. And I'm gonna uh, line this up with my screen and zoom in until it's to scale on my monitor. I can't zoom in far enough, shoot. Or you know what, better yet, I, I better just do this in PowerPoint. Sorry, these are my notes on uh, Bamboo Lab's latest upcoming printers. I'll be making a video about this soon, but for now, let's just, uh, let's just hide this away. We're, we're gonna have a really interesting video about all the stuff Bamboo Lab is coming out with later. So subscribe if you wanna catch that. So now everything's to scale, and I can take measurements off of my screen just using these calipers or a ruler, a tape measure. I think I'm gonna to have to bust out a monitor and get this thing up on the big screen because that would be the optimal user experience for you, the audience. So let's get that set up. All right, I'm getting like a tenth of a frame per second here. Come on, TV. What's going on? Ooh. All right, my last chance is to uh, project this from my phone onto the TV. Holy shit. 
All right, so we've got a couple landmark features here that are going to help us determine the scale here. So let's just scale this down a little bit. All right, so yeah, that's about the right size. So it looks like this machine is, yeah, it looks like about 14 and a half inches, um, which in metric is 36, um, 36 millimeters, no, 36 centimeters. Yeah, if it's 36 centimeters across on the base, that means, let's also measure the distance between these two stepper motors. Another way to get an idea of the scale is to measure the length of the power supply then measure the distance between these two stepper motors and you'll note that it's roughly the same so the spacing between the two pillars is probably about the same that would put it in line with being about the size of this build tray so here you can see the bamboo lab build tray which is 256 millimeters wide and here's the standard ender 3 sized build tray which is I think it's 235 millimeters wide so it should be roughly the same size as this power supply, if not a little bit smaller. So we're looking at an Ender 3 sized build volume, as far as I can tell. So it'll be interesting to see how that machine shakes out, and whether or not it's worth recommending. I mean, AnchorMake has been pretty good about having high build quality in their products, and if it prints reliably, then maybe it'll be worth the downsides of not having a screen, and having a slightly smaller build volume. All right, well, thanks for tuning in to this episode of Nathan Builds Robots. Remember to check out the links. Um, I've put some in the description down below to some of my favorite Anchor products, and I've also linked the homepage of Anchor Make for when they decide to release more information on that product. You can just go check it out there. It should be coming out on August 1st, so make sure to hop over there and get that 10% off discount locked in so that when it does come out, you can get it if you so desire. All right, well, thanks for watching this episode of Nathan Builds Robots. Remember to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next episode.